They left RAF Caltrashaw this morning and they'll be based in Oman. At the same time, a squadron of Tornado fighter bombers is on its way from RAF Akrotiri in Cyprus to take up position in Saudi Arabia. In the Gulf itself, HMS Jupiter is the latest reinforcement to arrive. A supply ship was alongside as the crew were seen on deck inspecting their armaments of exosets and torpedoes. Jupiter, a frigate, also has a helicopter on board. The destroyer HMS York is already in the Gulf. Another frigate, Battle Axe, is on its way. News today that 40 Britons have got out over the Kuwaiti border to the Saudi desert and on to Bahrain. There are reports that some 500 cars are waiting at the border and the Iraqis from time to time are allowing some to cross it, even though the border is officially closed. One man gave this account of his escape. We tried a number of routes across the sand and uh, eventually found good going with the help of locals. And uh, in the end, the way was very clear. It's very difficult to organize anything. And that's why it's so important to get a message back to everybody over a media so that they can be reassured that it is possible to get out if you're lucky. And we were lucky. Demonstrations in the Gulf state of Qatar today against the invasion of Kuwait and the Iraqi president. But his latest appeal for Islam to unite against Saudi Arabia and the Americans in a holy war was followed this morning by demonstrations in the Yemen. Thousands are said to have obeyed the Iraqi leader's instructions and tried to attack the American and Saudi embassies there. They were beaten back by police. In the Gulf, American firepower intensifies by the day. How they will liaise with the Arab force, which is apparently on its way, has yet to be clarified. ...by one and savoured his success of last night. But troops, he said, were moving to Saudi Arabia already. We are starting to send some groups for reconnaissance and the Arab countries have already have taken the decision in the summit to help our friends with Arab forces and uh, we are going to do it, and Syria also is going to do it, maybe Morocco also. A curious assortment of leaders left together. President Benjadid of Algeria on the left, then next to him, Colonel Gaddafi of Libya, who was totally against sending troops. And on the right, President Assad of Syria, who agreed to send his own troops to join the force. Syria has been a radical outsider for years now, and President Assad hasn't enjoyed being bracketed with Gaddafi's Libya. This will bring him back to the Arab fold and international acceptability. In the center of Cairo, Egyptians were demonstrating against Iraq and in favor of the Emir of Kuwait and demanding the right to go to Saudi Arabia to fight. It was largely rhetorical. The only Egyptians who'll go will be 5,000 professional paratroopers. Kuwaiti exiles gave them emotional support and the Crown Prince of Kuwait thanked Egypt for its backing and promised that the Iraqis would be swept out of his country. That, however, is going to be the difficult part. A decade ago, George Bush has continued his family holiday in Maine. Yet behind the country house atmosphere, the president's crisis management team is in place and the telephone diplomacy continues. Conversations today with the leaders of Qatar and Bahrain. But the president stopped short of calling for the overthrow of Saddam Hussein. No, we're not prepared to support the overthrow, but I hope uh, that uh, these actions that have been taken uh, will result in an Iraq that is prepared to live uh, peacefully in a community of nations. And if that means Saddam Hussein changes his spots, so be it. And if he doesn't, I hope the Iraqi people do something about it uh, so that their leader will live by the norms of international behavior that uh, will be acceptable to other nations. And while he refused to use the word blockade, it's clear Mr. Bush believes Iraq is now economically as well as politically isolated. And so far, I've been very pleased that the Iraqis are uh, recognized that the export of oil uh, is, is uh, almost an impossibility now. And from Secretary of State Baker, a caution on Americans held by Iraq. Well, nothing has been demanded or asked. Uh, in connection with permitting them to uh, leave the country, uh, for one thing. And uh, we think it would be a mistake to, uh, to characterize it as a hostage situation.
U.S. strategy is to encourage the world to tighten a noose on Iraq, while by taking his holiday, the president is trying to show he's controlling the crisis, not the other way around. Gavin Esler, BBC News, Washington. Sweltering desert heat, unable to reach the Jordanian border post. 23 Japanese tourists got through, and two groups of people on diplomatic passports, East Germans and Americans. However, a British woman with a diplomatic passport was turned back with her four British companions. Americans and West Europeans are being singled out and prevented from leaving Iraq. Returning from the Cairo summit, King Hussein of Jordan expressed disappointment and again said he thought American intervention was not the right solution. But much stronger sentiment can be heard in Jordan, led by professional and academic groups. This is a battle for the future for the future of the Arab world, not only an Iraqi battle. Uh, the, the world is taking a new shape nowadays, and uh, uh, it seems that uh, the position of the Arab world in this uh, new world under formation has been determined as a subsidiary position. And the Iraqi move aims at uh, uh, putting the Arabs back on the political map where they deserve to be. And with the Israeli-occupied West Bank hills across the valley, villages on the Jordanian side echo to protest meetings. At Mahish, the mosque summons the whole village. Christians come as well. The young chant of fighting for Iraq and for all Arabs. The speakers pour scorn on American troops in Saudi Arabia. The whole village claims to speak with one voice, supporting Saddam Hussein. For takeoff to the Gulf, the confidence of a clenched fist from the pilots and a fond farewell from their wives, children and colleagues. The squadron will be armed with cluster bombs and 30 millimeter cannon, and they expect to cooperate closely with the Saudi Arabian Air Force, largely British trained and British equipped. But where there may be problems of coordination is on the ground, as Egyptian troops arrived in Saudi Arabia today to be joined by Syrians and Moroccans, the unresolved question is can they work with each other as a genuine Arab force? And who will be in command? Uh, just getting uh, one Arab uh, to talk to another, I say the Moroccans to talk to the Syrians, is not going to be easy, let alone the problem of these Arab forces talking to the Americans, talking to the Brits. Uh, just to find a common language and find a, a common means of communication will be difficult. In the waters of the Gulf, it won't be easy either. In this international naval operation, the French, for example, are determined not to take orders from any other country. But what President Bush wants most is solidarity from as many nations as possible. So for now at least, logistics are less important than politics. Cloudy weather has reduced Allied airstrikes, but there have still been 1,100 sorties in the last 24 hours. Some from bases in Turkey and Saudi Arabia, others from carriers in the Persian Gulf, and missile attacks from submarines in the Red Sea. Iraq hit back overnight, firing nine Scud missiles at Saudi Arabia. Six were aimed at the capital, Riyadh, but were shot down by American Patriot missiles. Two Scuds fired at Dahran were shot down. The last Scud fell harmlessly into the sea. The first Iraqi incursion last night was made west of Al-Wafa and was met by United States Marines with air support. The Iraqis lost ten tanks, the Americans two armoured personnel carriers. Later in the night, another Iraqi mechanized battalion invaded Saudi Arabia, reaching the abandoned oil town of al khaji American aircraft destroyed four of their tanks. Early this morning, 40 more Iraqi tanks crossed the border. They were stopped by soldiers of the Saudi National Guard with American air support. At the same time, another 40 Iraqi tanks made a fourth incursion from a base close to the Kuwaiti town of al wafa Iraq lost 10 tanks here. Tonight, fighting continues in Al-Hafji, where Saudi troops are believed to have surrounded the small force of Iraqis who entered the town last night. Dawn brought an unpleasant surprise to many people in this country. The remote was being held by Iraqi armor. The thin line of Saudi and Qatari troops defending Kafji had withdrawn. In the Iraqis' path lay the Americans' 1st Marine Division. If I get to the enemy, and I'm, and I'm clear to shoot, I'll arm this missile, I'll shoot it down range, take that bad boy out. 
While the Marines' howitzers pounded the Iraqi tanks seven miles away, American strike aircraft were bombing them. The Allies had not defended Kafji in depth because it was within Iraqi artillery range. The attack was not expected. It's hard to make an estimate of why, uh, why they would take su such an action. The, the force that uh, apparently has, has occupied the city is relatively small um, in, in comparison to the, the U.S. and coalition forces arrayed against it. Um, I don't know why they would do such a thing. Uh, they will probably be expelled by the day, we hope. We took these pictures in the abandoned town last weekend. Kafji's 45,000 residents had long since been evacuated because of Iraqi shellfire. The only Allied soldiers in sight were a few examining seabirds on the beach, dying from an oil spill caused by Iraqi shelling. Today's Iraqi attack, in the words of the American commander, shows there's still plenty of fight in them, whatever reverses their suffering from Allied bombing. Militarily, seizing this empty town poses no overall threat to the Allies. Iraqi losses of men and tanks are bound to be heavy, but they've killed at least 12 American Marines and showed a boldness that will command respect in the Arab world. Brand